The first one we're going to talk about is how do you transition from logo design to brand strategy? And if you look in the marketplace today, a lot of logo design is becoming cheaper and cheaper. You have people coming in on Fiverr, they're offering cheap logos. You have do-it-yourself logo things out there. You have the ability to just download a logo and type in your, your company name. And all of these things, some of them are providing really good design for very, very cheap. And so a designer today who's doing focusing on logo design really has to start uh, branching out into more uh, a, a bigger offering to retain their value in the marketplace or to even increase their value in the marketplace. So we're going to talk today first about how do you transition from logo design to brand strategy and Jacob, who's really talented, is going to give us a few thoughts on this first. Definitely. Thank you for the intro and I definitely agree with you with what you're saying about uh, increasing our value as designers and really leveling up. I've, I've been doing logo design for about 15 years with, along, along with branding, but I'm really pivoting my business based on um, a lot of content I've been consuming, books and um, videos on YouTube and uh, things like that. And it's really about um, selling it differently. I, I guess that's how it comes, what's it, what it comes down to. Uh, often I was just doing logo design with a bit of strategy in it. Like I was doing all the research with um, behind the company and, and packaging my services that way. It was all just one package. And what I'm really doing now is kind of separating them and talking about it as two different phases. So the strategy side of things and then the um, logo and brand identity side of things. Um, that way clients can separate the two and really realize the, the difference between just getting a piece of graphic when typing your um your brand name next to it versus a whole brand strategy that's backed up by research and your messaging and positioning and all of that. So that's really what I'm I'm transitioning into, updating my how I talk about myself and my services on my website, how I put my proposals together, how they're um, spaced out in phases versus with the strategy and then the, the brand inside of things. Uh, and that's really what's helping um, the conversation really get started when it comes to um, communicating the, the differences to the, the, the client. Yeah, and that's awesome. I, I'm a big, big fan of phased production where you're selling the client. I've done a bunch of videos on this where you're selling the client into project phases. And I think what you're doing is, is perfect where a client comes to you and they say, hey, we want a logo. We need a new logo for our company. And the great thing to do to increase the value you're providing for them is to say, hold on a second, before we jump in and design a logo for you, let's back it up and start talking about what the whole strategy is for your brand. And in our business, we sell a, or we, we offer brand strategy services, and we do that in phase one, and it really helps us get the logo right. And in our brand strategy process, we offer certain services and you mentioned some of them uh jacob on your in your talk right there but positioning is one like how does this company position themselves or how are we going to position this brand in the marketplace in relation to the competitive landscape uh the messaging aspect coming up with brand adjectives the brand description um the overall messaging like what's your what's your description statement for this brand persona development where we could talk about creating identifying the target audience and then creating certain personas that this brand needs to speak to all of those things are deliverables inside of what we could consider a brand strategy and so if you have a client who is asking you for logo design the easy upsell and the value add that you can bring to the table is to sell them on brand strategy that has certain deliverables that I've mentioned here uh, to increase what you can charge the client for what a logo design. I just want to jump in there. And uh, a lot of that comes down to educating the client as well. And that's the biggest thing. Uh, what, it, what it really comes down to is talking about those services. And that's really the learning curve as a designer is to learn how to talk about those services and how to upsell and differentiate them um, from one another because clients don't know this at all. 
Um, and even as designers learning, uh, getting out of design school, it, they don't even teach this in design school mostly. Well, they didn't for my, my school. So it's learning about that. And that's why I love your book because it does talk about um, those those little nuances that you, you can pick up on and you learn. And the more you talk about it with these potential clients, the more you can, the more confident you get and the better you can sell through. It's a great comment. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the big takeaway I would say from this conversation with uh, for any designer watching this is if the client's asking you for a logo design, you should be thinking, hold your horses. We need to back up a second and start talking about the whole strategy for your brand and then sell them into a phase one that happens even before their logo design. And that's a brand strategy phase with certain deliverables that you can charge money for. And that has huge, huge value to the client. And it also positions you away from all of the Fiverr designers out there who are just designing, cranking out logos. You're, you're differentiating yourself and you're creating more of an expertise in your uh, agency's uh, persona that you can build upon and grow your business into bigger ways. Mm -hmm.